Hi, this is Charlie Montotiello with Blue Bear Flutes. Of course, bluebearflutes.com. You can find us on Facebook as Blue Bear Flutes and Blue Bear Arts, and uh, just about all around the web, I'm sure. Uh, here on YouTube, of course, is Blue Bear Flutes as well. So I wanted to talk to you guys today, since I had a drone out here with me, about a few drone playing techniques, something that I'm not sure uh, many of you have thought about, other than just playing the drone. But techniques are what makes a flute sound really amazing to your listener. And of course to you as well in most cases. Um, with the drone flute, because it is a different type of instrument than the just a standard Native American flute, there are some things that you can do that are a little different and that lead your listener or yourself um, down, I would like to say, a different path uh, musically. So I wanted to discuss some of those things with you. Of course, like I've mentioned several times, you can play a drone flute as long as it has two mouthpieces, not just one squashed together, then you can, uh, you can play the drone flute uh, drone side or flute side independently. You can play both of them together or you can play just a flute side. And um, that gives you, of course, the ability to play most Native American music type the drone and when you play the drone you'll find that you you tend to want to play something else and some of you may not have any good ideas about what you want to play so I thought I'd just share some of mine with you um, when I play the drone one thing I noticed that I do a lot is I attack the notes a little more often than I do when I'm playing the flute as you heard me play this part actually play it in one long breath. I didn't stop playing at any point in time. When I play the drum together, I usually tend to... You heard me uh, separate some of the notes a little bit, and the way that you achieve this, and I've talked about it in other flute playing videos, is you start and stop your, your tone. In speaking, people call it a glottal stop. In playing the flute, it's, it's just a, like a staccato is what a musician is going to call it, or um, probably one of a dozen other ways that you can call how you start and stop the notes. Um, when I was a beginning musician, they told us to start and stop the notes by saying ta 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 or da da da. And that's a good technique for a beginner uh, to some degree. However, I, th I think I've discovered, of course, speaking a couple of different languages and, and uh, playing a few different instruments, uh, I've discovered some other ways to describe them. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start my note and not stop the note. And I'm going to do that all the way through the flute. I'll start the first note and I'll play all the way through. And that's basically the one time start and then everything else is just changing my fingers. With this next one, I'm going to start each note, but I'm not going to stop the airflow. I'm going to continue a strong airflow just like I did then. I'm not going to stop it at all. However, I'm going to start each individual note. So this might make a little more sense. And if you listen carefully, you can tear, tell the difference between that and this next technique, which is starting and stopping the notes uh, with my tongue and with my, my throat. Um, I'm going to start the air and stop the air quickly. You can change the length of time however you like, but quickly this time just for demonstration. And that's really easy to do. It's nothing all really to do. The thing that a lot of beginners get hung up on that I think myself remembering back to when I was a beginner um, that we may not have considered as much back in those days, um, including myself in the group of beginners because there was a time when I first started. Um, the thing that I didn't do was I didn't change that a lot. I might would go uh, a whole song or two and play everything just run together like the first style. And with this technique, like I said on the drone, the that can really change the tone of the flute because you have the two flutes together. So let's, let's hear what it sounds like. Uh, first, playing all together. I'll start the first note, but I'm gonna go all the way through, and I'm not gonna change this fingering in the back. You know, most of you know I have an extra fingering in the back of my drums. Um, I'm going to just play all the way through, and then I'll go to the next step, which is starting each individual note, but I will not stop the note. And then the last technique, I'll start each individual note and I will stop them it immediately. So.
last one, you can really hear there's something going on there that's amazing, and I've learned to incorporate it in a lot of my drone flute songs. And uh, here's an example just to show you. And you see how simple that is. You can start one note and play through the next few without uh, starting and stopping, and then you can do the start each note individually but continue playing and you can start and stop the note and put all that together and makes a really amazing sounding uh, flute experience for your listener and of course another really good technique that i like to use is i'll go between playing the flute and the drum sometimes so uh, it might kind of uh, shock your your uh, audience if they're listening to you uh, or even yourself sometimes if you're playing you're thinking wow this is really great it's all peaceful and stuff and then you add the extra uh, tone in there so stop on something other than the top or the bottom notes, which a lot of people tend to get stuck in doing. Um, I even find myself a lot stopping on the bottom note, but on the drone especially, if you, if you stop your song, if you end it, whether it abruptly, softly, fade out, or however you end it, if you end your song uh, on one of the, not the top note, but the one of the three in the middle, or even sometimes on this guy here, you'll, you'll find that you... Uh, um, really just end on a, an amazing mesmerizing tone and a mesmerizing sound. So there's a couple of techniques and then of course on our drone with this extra finger here which all of our drones these days include uh, except for our river cane drones, the A-frames, it's impossible to make an A-frame drone with an extra fingering that you're going to use on a regular basis uh, because your hands are going like this and you don't want to you know if you if you have a fingering over here and you're playing something over here, you're going to have to switch back and then switch back. So that's why the convenience of this uh, style of drone is, is so much easier, in my opinion, to play multiple notes and to have extra fingerings and that kind of thing. And of course, our uh, uh, fifth and fourth drones are just, once again, mesmerizing all the time. So there's only three fingerings on each side. Uh, this guy, you, uh, you have the convenience of having that extra note. So just to give you a few things you can do, technique-wise with an extra note on the back of a drone chamber. Um, once again, this is a fingering that is functional, not one that is plugged. If I plugged the fingering and I'd have to keep it unplugged all the time, you would only be able to play that note all the time. And it's, to me, it's not as functional because you have to mechanically remove it or something of that nature. Um, and of course, our plugs that we used to include in our flutes were only for the sake of a beginner learning to keep their thumb over that hole. But once again, as I may have mentioned in another video before, um, you know, you really, it's so easy to put your thumb right there. It matches where your other fingers are. And on all of our drones, it's just as convenient. Uh, so anyway, just to give you an idea with an extra tone on the back of the flute that's functional that you can actually use,
a couple different ways just to give you kind of a comparison contrast. Might be worth going back and listening over. Um, but you can actually start a, a frame off using both the drone chamber and the flute, and then you can end it with just the flute, kind of transverse of the way that I showed you first, where you can start with the flute and add the drone. And then in addition to that, once you get your listener listening to that idea, that motif, and you've repeated it at least once, you can go back and add that extra note in, and that's always a happy place. I mean, people, I've, I've watched thousands of people's eyes just, you know, glow after you do that. And it's because uh, your mind looks for patterns and things. And a lot of us play the same pattern over and over again. And if we don't play the same pattern over and over again, we listen for the same pattern as a listener, we listen for the same pattern over and over again. And when you do that, and you do repeat it, and then you play it a different way the next time, that's when it's just like uh, awe-inspiring and, and really amazing to your listener. So that's where an extra note there comes in really handy as something that you can transition to rather than something that you have to plug and unplug, which we get an occasional request for that. I don't like to make those kind of flutes because once again, they're not something that you're playing all the time. It's uh, something that you have the benefit of of changing the key of one side of the flute and that might get boring and be like having a flute that only played the one note all the time but it's one of the notes that may not be the best one to play so um, after playing music my entire life we've decided to make the drone the way we do today and I hope you guys enjoy them we've gotten so much feedback by people all over the world that enjoy our drone flutes and of course um, most of these techniques are ones that you can use on most other people's flutes once again an A-frame flute that's the one with a shoot chamber, excuse me, a chamber going that way and one with the chamber going that way. You can play independently, so you can play or you can play. Um, however, you can't uh, really effectively put a fingering in the back of the A-frame and be able to play it as long as you have five or six holes on this side to continue playing as well. Uh, it's just not a convenience. So uh, that's why I really like to make this kind of drone flute. Anyway, I hope these videos have found all of you well and that you've enjoyed them. And certainly appreciate uh, all of your views on our videos, and of course our website and visiting us, and all the questions and comments and positive everything that everyone likes to share. Uh, once again, um, you know, my name is Charlie Montotiello. I'm not the authority on Native American flutes or flute making, even even though we've got a book out about it and I've got hundreds of videos on making flutes. It doesn't necessarily make me the authority, but uh, I do like to think I've made a few. So. In either case, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video, and thank you so very much again for watching. Any questions or comments, please feel free to send them our way. We'd love to hear from you. And don't forget to visit our website, bluebearflutes.com. We're adding new products all the time, uh, and uh, so many of them are just amazing. And, you know, to me, even they're, they're amazing. So I hope you guys uh, take care, enjoy it, and thank you so much again.